By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back once again in Zandam, the last time for now for Zombie Cup number three. We have reached the finals and I mean, I'm just excited about this. We've got two really cool decks. We've got the organized dead deck who's on a white weenie deck, but not your typical white weenie deck. It's got some very cool cards, like Island of Wak Wak, for example. So it's it's a, it's kind of a cool, personalized version of white weenie. And he is taking on uh, Yoop, and Yoop is playing a very strong deck, but also a cool deck. Sometimes those things go hand in hand. He's playing a deck I've called Hand of Justice. Because he's playing two Hand of Justice in this deck, it's a three-color deck white, blue, and red. Now, of course, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks, but before I jump into the deck decks, first, a quick message from our sponsor, 3 for one Trading. 3 for one Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy, and, yes, yes, old school magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out of print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 341 Trading for sponsoring this video. And we are back and uh, before I kick off the deck decks first a quick reminder that if you want to go straight to the games maybe check out the deck decks later. The easiest way to do this is as always by checking out the timestamps in the description below. Um, the timestamp MTG games will take you straight to the matches and in that same description you can also find a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page that is patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And of course if you want to know more about this tournament and the rules and all that kind of stuff again check the description below. Okay and now we're going to start with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the Hand of Justice deck because it's just so cool. Let's have a look. And here you see the deck of Yoop, so I've called it Hand of Justice because of those two beautiful Hands of Justice. Hand of Justice is a creature, one white and five for a two six, so six toughness, really difficult to kill. Um, and you can tap it and tap three untapped white creatures you control to destroy target creatures. So it's very bad removal, uh, but I love that he's playing it. That's really in the spirit of this tournament where we're, you know, celebrating 30 years of fallen empires. And then, of course, he's playing with a lot of white creatures because you need that for Hand of Justice. So he's playing with uh, uh, three Ecation Javelineers. He's playing with a um, uh, with a full playset of White Knights. He's playing with Order of the Ebon Hand. He's playing with Northern Paladin. And I think he's, he's playing Northern Paladin main also because it's called the Zombie Cup. So then he has that, that answer to the zombies. And then, of course, he's just playing a lot of good cards. I mean, let's not fool ourselves. So then we have, well, actually, those Pump Knights and all those small creatures are quite good as well. But... He's playing with your, with your staples, let me put it that way. He's playing with uh, uh, Swords to Plowshares, Disenchants, Balance, Psionic Blasts, the Blue Power. Um, and then he has a little bit of Splash of Red, again, for very good cards. Lightning Bolts, uh, Wheel of Fortune, and of course, a beautiful Sheevan Dragon. I do love the fact that he's put that Sheevan in there. Um, and these decks are always quite good, I feel, when you, when you have Red with White, because you've got Swords to Plowshares for the bigger creatures. You've got lightning bolts to kind of deal with the small creatures or deal with your opponent. You know, depends on what you need at what time, right? That's why a lightning bolt is so good because it's such a flexible card. Um, and I think at a tournament like this where Fallen Empire is allowed, you're probably going to see a lot of smaller creatures, right? Because the best creatures in Fallen Empire have a low toughness. So then, of course, you can use your bolts to kill those. Except, of course, you're unlucky and have to play against me and I'm playing orcs today. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I didn't make the finals, so that kind of says enough. Um, but yeah, then you need a double bolt, I guess, or just one sword to plowshares. But my point is, um, I think lightning bolt is really good, usually in a format where you also have fallen empires. Um, and usually these, these formats tend to be a little bit more creature heavy. So then, of course, and having a full playset of swords and a full playset of bolts is not overdoing it. It's actually making your deck stronger. And um, what I like here is kind of that combination as well between... 
control on one side and kind of aggro also that's also in there you know because you are playing with these cheap creatures you know order of light bird white knight occasion javelinier they're really cheap to cast so you've got to plan early game and then you've got a little little gap you know creature wise with the curve because then you've got your shivan dragon and you've got your two hands of justice you know they're both six to cast um, in between there i guess you've got your northern paladin but there's just also a lot of you know power going on in this deck obviously um, and also restricted cards can also be considered power, right? They're so good. So your wheel and your balance. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just looking like a good deck. It's looking like a strong deck. Uh, we don't have the sideboard here. I wonder if he's playing with one. I don't know. Um, you know what? We'll just find out in the finals. We'll see if he's going to make some, some changes in his board. I, I, to be honest, I forgot if he actually played with the sideboard or not. But this is his deck. Beautifully black bordered, by the way. Another beautiful black border deck. It's really... Um, a sight to see, right? It's a beautiful deck. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Dedek. And here we see the deck of Dedek. So it's really nice to have Dedek in the finals because he's also the organizer. So that's just really cool. Um, and this is organized again by the Zandam Zombie Master. So they organize the Zombie Cup, uh, Cup every single year. This is the third edition. And it's just always a lot of fun. And uh, what I really like when I'm looking at this deck is that he's added that card. You see the Order of Light Burr with the writing on it, 1994-2019. Um, that was a special draft, a Fallen Empires draft, organized by Yoop, who's the other finalist, uh, to celebrate 25 years of Fallen Empires. So it's really cool to see that card now coming back here in the finals, kind of like a full circle, uh, now that we're celebrating 30 years of Fallen Empires. Um, and yeah, let's look at the decks. So at first glance, you're like, okay, this is your white weenie strategy. You've got, you know, Acacian Javelineers, you've got a Savannah Lions, Order of Light, Burr, White Knights, you've got Thunder Spirits, you've got, you know, Sarah Angels. It's quite of a a sensible curve, I guess, you know, so these are the creatures you're going to play out, turn them sideways, attack, you've got some crusades in there, uh, but then there are some other cards that are quite interesting, he's playing a single moat, which surprise maybe is a big, is a big word, because I know Dedek really loves his moat, but you are playing, of course, with a lot of creatures that don't fly, so remember, moat works both ways, so neither uh, player can attack with non-flying creatures, so yes, he's got thunder spirits and angels, but he also has a lot of ground troops, of course, it's up to him to decide when he plays the moat. So, so he's in control of when are you playing the moat. Moat, of course, being more a control mid-game, late-game card. So maybe early game, you're going to deploy your troops, assuming that they're just going to be killed anyway. And then after you've dealt an X amount of damage with those ground troops, you play your um, uh, your moat. And maybe that you know can help you to kind of stick around a little bit longer. And then you can deploy your big flyers and win the game. I mean, there are a few more control cards in this deck besides Moat, right? We also see, for example, Wrath of God. I like Wrath of God and Moat because it's like the creature of your opponent are locked. And then your opponent's probably going to find a way to get rid of Moat. But then you you may have that Wrath of God in your hand to kind of wipe the board clean, you know? So that's I kind of like that synergy. Um, and then we also see uh, two Icy Manipulators in the deck. We see a Gem de Tome. Uh, we see Island of Vak Vak that I mentioned uh, in the introduction. So there are, you know, there are some control elements here um, in his deck as well. So it's it's not just your typical white weenie. There's, you know, some personality sprinkled over the deck, which I really like. He's also playing a Caracas uh, there, which is funny. I mean, I haven't seen a lot of legends at this tournament, but hey, if you, if you see one, you have your Caracas, you can just bounce it. I guess why not play it, right? Maybe... You could say because then with a with a blood moon in the game, it turns into a mountain and maybe he's got something with mountain walk. But how often do you really see that happen? So I think it's kind of safe to just play your Caracas. But then again, you lose. Anyway, it's 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 debatable. Let me know in the comments, like, would you play that single Caracas or would you say, you know what, it's it's hardly ever useful and it's better just to have a planes because when the blood moon hits the board, then the planes is not affected. Right? So that could also be um that could also be the reasoning. I guess so it kind of you know goes goes both ways um then when we're looking at the sideboard we're not really seeing a good sideboard for this matchup by the way uh, we see a lot of anti-red stuff like uh, repentant blacksmith uh circle of protection red we see that kind of stuff but that's not really going to help him that much yes he plays with red but only a little bit cop black is not going to help him cleanse a card you hardly ever see anymore really cool to have this in this uh, in this wide deck uh, always enjoyed the art um, but yeah, we're not, we're not, that's not going to be very useful here in this matchup. Uh, I love the, uh, King Suleiman there. That's so cool. Unfortunately, that's not useful in this match. That would have been really sweet. Um, but yeah, anyway, it's an interesting take on White Weenie. 
And um, yeah, it's, it's looking like a good deck, Derek. You made it all the way to the finals with this. So what I like about these decks, I guess it's, is that it's not all in. Like usually when you go white weenie, it's kind of an all in strategy, which is which can be really good. But I like the fact that you kind of put some control elements in it. That, that makes your deck more flexible. I don't know if it makes it more stronger, but it does make it more flexible for sure. Anyway, this is the deck of Derek. We looked at the deck of Yoop and that only means one thing. We are ready for the finals of the Zombie Cup number three. Here we go. Game number one, here we go. So on the left, we have Yoop, who's playing uh, three colors, white, blue, and red. And I've called this deck Hand of Justice because he's playing with two Hands of Justice, starting here with the occasion Javelin here. And he's taking on Derek, the player on the right, also the organizer of this event. And he's playing uh, a white weenie deck with some interesting choices. Like he's playing a moat, for example. Um, he's also playing a force field. So there are some control elements in his deck as well. He's playing Island of Wak Wak. So... It's a, it's a different white weenie. So it's kind of white weenie by Dedek. But uh, you'll see. You'll find out. And there are both players kind of... Uh, trying to find the right counters. And then hopefully we get to see... Uh, now Derek taking on his turn. Yeah, now Derek can, uh, can draw. Let's see what he can do. So pretty strong opener, I guess, uh, by Yoop here. Also a Mox from Derek, Mox Emerald. He's not playing with any green. There's his own Ecation Javelin here. Okay, so now there's uh, the option here for Yoop to use his counter to kill the Ecation Javelin here. That seem, uh, seems to be sensible, to be honest, exactly. It's kind of a no-brainer also because he's playing with the Order of Light Burst. Both players are playing a full playset. And here we see uh, a Strip Mine taking care of the Caracas. There's a disenchant. Wow. That is so mean. Look at that. Nothing left on the board for Dedek has to build up again. Starting with no permanence. And it's his second turn. Okay, there's a planes. I wonder if we're gonna see Savannah Lines. No, we're not, just a pass. There's the attack again, so that uh Ooh, Swords of Plowshares on the Acacian Javelin near. <laughs> Oh, that surprises me. I would have just taken the damage, to be honest. Also, of course, I know what else is in the deck uh, of Yoop. But Derek doesn't, of course. Here we see a Chaos Orb hitting the board, so he could flip on uh, the planes because it's still the only land that gives mana. We see Island of Vakvak here being cast. Remember, Island of Vakvak cannot be tapped for mana, unfortunately. So you can tap it and then target a creature with flying. The, the power is reduced to zero. There's the pass, so no flip. That surprises me a little bit. I would have expected Yoop to flip her, but look at that. Yoop is also missing a land drop. There we see a Savannah line. So both players kind of light on lands at the moment. There's a quick uh, activation. Oh, now he's going to flip. Yeah, that, that really... Perhaps he thinks that Islands of Vakpa can also tap for mana, that he's worried about a potential disenchant. That, that surprised me a little. You would have expected him to do that uh, straight away. Because then Derek wouldn't have been able to actually cast the lion. Here we see a lightning bolt. And that's kind of what I what I talked about in the deck deck section of this video as well. When I discussed Cube's deck. Is when you have lightning bolts and swords. It's just very strong. You can use your bolts uh, for the small stuff. And then your swords later in the game. There's just a pass here. So it's, again it's Derek's turn. So you're really not finding any lands. <clears throat> which is a bit of an issue for him. Again, just passing the turn. Ooh, unfortunate. So after playing the strip mine, hasn't found a single land anymore. But now also Derek just passing turn. He, of course, has lost a Mox and two lands already to uh, Yoop. And it's really now just a waiting game to see who draws into lands first. and can start casting some things. Just passing again. Okay, there's a Mox. But I mean, thinking about Yoop's deck, he's got a playset of White Knights, a playset of Order of Light Bird, so he really just needs double white. Okay, here we see a Soul Ring. Is there a Disenchant in hand for Yoop? If it is, he's not playing it out. There's a Mishra's Factory. Again, I, I believe he kind of needs a double white. 
Also Northern Paladin being four to cast double white and two. Ooh, and look at this. Also, Dedek just passing the turn. I was kind of expecting him to be able to play out something with that Soul Ring. But now we see uh, an Acacian Javelin here by Yup here. So 1-1 one, one with a counter. And now he animates and attacks. And there's a Disenchan though. Yeah, that is unfortunate for Yup. Took the risk. Because now you, you don't just lose a creature, you also lose a land. And you're already very, very light in land, so that's not ideal. On the other hand, um, he's not using a disenchant on the mox, which is good, I think, especially the uh, the blue mox. The mox sapphire is quite important, although he has, of course, the uh, city of brass. There's the attack again with the javelin here. So Dedek here uh, dropping to 19, it seems. Drawing a card for turn. Does he have to discard counting his hand here? That would be unfortunate. Yeah, he's got a discard. Discarding a Crusade, passing the turn. Of course, Crusade in this matchup, not ideal because it also pumps the white creatures of uh, Yup. Here we see a library of Alexandria. That could be quite good. I believe he's got seven in hand, so we can start trying to find... Oh, look at that, another sorts. You could start trying to find uh, lands with that Loa. And I think if you're Yup, you're kind of fine with the swords on the Acacian Javelinier. Because that means he, he's not going to have any sword supply shares left when you start casting the bigger stuff. And now it's up to Yup to kind of choose. So in the upkeep, he's going to draw that extra card. There we see another planes. Okay, so so now we should be able to do something, right? With two white. Could, for example, cast a Thunder Spirit now. Okay, there we see a white knight. Two two first strike protection from black. Okay, there's a plateau found, so eight cards in hand. So now both players are starting to find their lands. That is definitely going to make this game a little bit more interesting. So Yup in the tank now. He has eight options, if I'm not mistaken. Going to tap two. What are we going to see? Are we going to see a disenchant on the soul ring? Yep, there's a disenchant on the soul ring. Kind of makes sense. Only one more land. And uh, for example, Dedek could start casting a Sarah Angel. So seven in hand, if I'm not mistaken right now. So... If he passes, okay, he's going to draw a card now. So I guess he's got another play, going to go up to eight. Perhaps a lightning bolt on the white knight. Yeah, there's a lightning bolt on the white knight. Yeah, really impressed with the lightning bolts in this matchup. I think they're just really, really good. There's another planes. Okay, are we going to see another white knight or order of light burr? Or, yep, another white knight hitting the board. Playing a full play set. Both players are. But of course, the creature is very boltable. Ooh, and now he's got six. He's got six mana. That means he could cast a Hand of Justice. I mean, I may be wishful thinking a little, but I'm really hoping to see Hand of Justice in this match. Okay, there's a White Knight for Yup as well. So they could trade Knight against Knight. Let's see what else Yup can cast here. He's gonna tap three, take a damage from his city, going to 16. Oh, fireball for two. Okay. Playing a fireball. Not quite sure if I saw that fireball in the deck photo. I missed it, I guess. But playing a fireball here on the uh, on the white knight. So so far, Yup has been very successful in just cleaning the board. Oh, there's a balance. Oh, I love this. Also because of that Loa, right? Balance is quite good. It's going to kill the White Knight and it's going to force you to discard three cards. And he stepped out. So he cannot just kind of respawn and, you know, play a few Lightning Bolts. He's going to discard his own balance. That makes sense. But needs to discard two more cards. There's a Hand of Justice. Oh, no. Okay, so it looks like he only had six in hand. 
So only discarding twos. That means he had six, I believe, or there are five cards in hand for Derek. Kind of hard to see. I believe there are four. Oh, Sheev and Dragon hitting the board. Oh, ho, ho. But of course, there's the Island of Vakvak. But, Yoop, you can still pump it, though. You can attack. It changes it to zero. And then you can use the fire breathing effect. I believe. So, um, you know, you can still do that. But it is beautiful to see, of course, uh, the Sheevan Dragon. It's going to tap six more. Oh, Hand of Justice. Oh, I love this. Hand of Justice is a 2-6. 14 now, by the way, for you. But really nice to see Hand of Justice on the board. I'm not sure if it's the first time on Timmy Talks, but definitely, it definitely doesn't happen often that I see a Hand of Justice. So a uh, White Knight here being cast by Dedek. That's not going to do much. And there's the pass. And I wonder, I wonder if he's going to attack with the Sheev and if we're going to see if he can do that pumping. Because I think he can. Because then you could still deal 3 damage. Now remember, he's on a lower life total, of course, than Dedek. So it would make sense to keep the Hand of Justice on blocking duty. Although 14 is still pretty comfortable. Also considering that, um, you know, Dedek obviously is not playing with direct damage. Here we see an Order of Light Bear. Okay, this changes it a little bit. Oh, and then Cajun Javelin here. <clears throat> I think if you're Yoop, you can now safely attack with the hand as well. Yeah, attacking with... Oh, not with the hand though. So he's going to pump it up. So he's going to deal one point of damage. Yay! That is so cool. So one point of damage dealt with the Sheevan Dragon. And I actually remember a match where um, I was playing with Weakness and I put like two Weaknesses on the Sheevan and still got killed by the Sheevan because of that fire breathing effect. And here we see uh, Savannah Lines hitting the board. Not going to do much right now. And actually, if you're Derek, you've got to worry because look at that Hand of Justice only needs one more white creature and he can start killing the two creatures on the side of Dedek. And I'm, I'm sure Dedek is now regretting those swords to plowshares earlier in the game. Not having a swords left. I think it does make sense to put a swords to plowshares on the occasion javelin here with a javelin counter. Because he is playing with a lot of one toughness creatures. But especially that, ja that javelin here that didn't have the counter. I would have just said, you know what, it's a 1-1, one -one, whatever. Here we see another Order of Light Bear hitting the board. Yeah, now we can start doing the Hand of Justice. Oh, I think this is a first on the channel. Yes. Hand of Justice <laughs> killing a White Knight. Wow, that is style points. And it shows how corrupt the Hand of Justice is, right? Killing a White Knight. Oh, look at this. Insult after injury. There's the time walk taking an extra turn, uh, next uh, next turn. And now there's the pump, so dealing one point of damage with the Sheevan as well. It's looking very bad for Dedek. If I would be Yoop, I would be tempted now to just use the counter on Occasion Javelinier, kill the Lion and just attack with the rest of the troops. He can, of course, also use Hand of Justice and kill the Lion that way. But it's looking very good for you, here. And actually, Dedek now needs that balance. Let's see what he's going to do. Tapping three. Okay. What are we going to see for three? Oh, wow. A time twister. I like it. It's very cool. I, th I think I wouldn't have done it, to be honest, but I do love it for the game. Yeah, two Icy's, three Sarah Angels didn't have the lands to play that out, so now they're going to uh, shuffle it back in, and they're going to draw a fresh seven. Yeah, it's really nice that he's doing this, you know, just drawing seven new cards. Let's see what we're going to get. And I believe that Yup is quite confident uh, at this stage. Now remember as well, because of the time walk, uh, the Island of Vakvak is already tapped. So you can just deal a lot of damage here with the Sheevan alone. 
First, he's going to draw seven new cards to see what he's going to get. There's one Lightning Bolt in there for sure. Disenchant. A land, I believe. It's kind of hard to see the rest. Now it's also up to, uh, to Dedex. Going to draw seven new ones. What is he going to find? Yup, drawing card number eight here with the Loa. Loa, of course, being active again. There's the Plateau. And there is a White Knight. I'm pretty sure he's not going to play out anything else. I think he's on six now already. Oh, okay, okay he is going to kill... The Savannah Lines, there's the attack for seven. He will drop to ten. Looks like he's not going to pump it. He's going to pass the turn. And I mean, because of the time twister, Balance is now also back in the deck of Dedek. And I think Balance is still really a good, a good card in this uh, situation. Maybe try to empty the hand a little bit more. But then again, I mean, he's on ten. He doesn't have a lot of time. After the draw, you know, and playing out the land, he now has seven in hand again. I guess the first point of business is just at least to get a blocker. I mean, you can use your Island of Vak Vak on Shivan. Then you're still taking a little bit of damage, but not too much. Okay, there's the uh, Swords to Plowshares, I believe. Yeah. I would have been tempted to maybe play the Swords on the hand. I wonder if he's got a moat. If he plays out the moat next turn, because he's playing a single moat in his deck. It's hard to see this card. Okay, it's a divine offering, so taking care of one of the moxen, taking care of the ruby. And he's really emptying his hand, so I wonder if that means that he's got a balance in hand. Because here's the occasion javelin here, knowing that it's probably gonna die to the hand of justice. And this is going to be interesting because if you're Yup and you're suspecting a balance, maybe you just want the the javelin here to stick around. Then again, you do know that the next turn, exactly next turn, Dedek can use a javelin counter. So this makes sense. Now he can attack for six for eight. Oh, and he can pump and finish the game. Yeah. He also has a bolt in hand, I believe. Yep, that we see the hand being extended. So game number one here going uh, going to Yoop. And uh, that was a cool game. I mean, we got to see Hand of Justice. I like it. And now uh, both players are going to dive into their sideboards. And we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So we've got uh, Yoop on the left. Derek here on the play. After losing that first game, he's the player on the right. Starting here with a Soul Ring. Planes into a Soul Ring. And there we see a City of Brass taking a damage here in the occasion Javelineer. So a lot of Javelineers in this matchup. Both players playing with a full playset. And they can be quite decisive, right? Because they're also playing with a full playset of uh, Order of Light Burrs. So kind of the battle for those Javelineers. Tapping four. Okay, there's a Thunder Spirit. 2-2 two -two First Strike. Flying. Card from Legends. Hasn't been reprinted. They can, of course, fly over the Occasion Javelinier. Now, if Yoop can find a second Javelinier, he can actually uh, spear the uh, Thunder Spirit down. Ow. Tapping two here, taking a damage from his own City of Brass, dropping to 18. There's the White Knight, passing the turn back. And there we have... Uh, Derek uh, playing his land for turn. Planes number three. So does he have a Sarah Angel? There's the attack first with the Thunder Spirit. 16. Oh, is there a Sarah Angel? Ho oh, ho, Sarah! 4-4 four, four Flyer turn three made possible because of the Soul Ring. Yeah, this is tough for Yup. Has to find a Swords here. And uh, I think he doesn't have it, or else he would have maybe played it already on the Thunder Spirit. It looks like he is going to tap three. Are we going to see a Time Twister, for example? Tapping three, taking two points of damage. Oh, of course, a Psionic Blast has those in his deck as well. Does take four damage, though. Two from the City of Brass and two from the Psionic Blast. So it's not a cheap 
Psionic Blast uh, for Yuke to cast here. Does have an attack lined up now, attacking for three. Dedek dropping to 17. Can now attack with the Thunder Spirit, put him on 10. Does he have another Angel? That would be very good. Tapping two though, okay, there's a White Knight, not too shabby as well. Tapping a white. Ooh, a spirit link. I think I think I would have kept the spirit link in hand, to be honest. You know, be a little bit more conservative with your resources. But time will tell. So Yup on 10, Derek on 17. Remember, this is the finals. Yup already won the first game. If he wins this one. He crowns himself the champion of the Zombie Cup, number three, here in Zandam. There we see a Black Lotus. Does he have a Shivan Dragon, for example, or a Hand of Justice? Could play those out now with the help of that Black Lotus. Tapping a white, another Ecation Javelin here. So now he's got two, and he could kill the Thunder Spirit next turn if he wants to with those two Javelin counters. Ooh, cracking the Lotus. Playing a disenchant. So having one white floating, tapping two more, taking two more points of damage. I mean, those, those City of Brasses really hurts. And there's a Wheel of Fortune. Let's see. So again, another draw seven. That's what I really like about these decks that play uh, Wheel of Fortune and Time Twister. It's just a lot of fun. You get to draw a lot of new hands. There we see a Plateau. There's a pass. I really wonder if maybe he's got a bolt and we're going to see a bolt now on the Thunder Spirit as soon as Derek wants to attack with it. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Okay, there's a Mox Pearl. So if he has a land drop now as well, he could go back up to five mana. He could cast a Sarah Angel if he has one in hand, of course. Playing, I believe, three Sarah Angels, was it? Can't remember if it were three or four. Anyway, there's a... Uh, Strip mine. Oh, there's a moat. So that's going to ground those creatures, including the White Knight of Dedek as well, but also the two Occasion Javelineers and the White Knight of Yoop. There's the attack. Gonna go to six. No lightning bolt. Yeah, and this is the thing with moat that I kind of talked about in the deck deck. Um, I know that Dedek really loves his moat, so he is always playing it, I think. Um, but with his deck, I'm not sure if it's the right card because he's also playing with a full playset of White Knights, a playset of Order of Lightbird. So he's got a lot of ground troops as well. And then, you know, the the mode can, can start working against you also. And I mean, if you can find land number six and he can find a Hand of Justice, he can just slowly kill down everything. And I think right now for you, you know, you're probably going to use your two uh, Javelin counters. Exactly, he's putting them there separate on the Thunder Spirit. That would seem to be the most sensible thing to do, also considering the fact that he's on uh, six at the moment. There we see a maze of if. Okay, we're gonna see a strip mine on a plateau. So I kind of like this play because you're you're hoping that Yupa's gonna keep using those city of brasses. You know, they kind of force him to do that. And there we see the two javelins, uh, Acacian javelineers, killing the thunder spirit. The Thunder Spirit is a goner. Then second main, are we going to see another Thunder Spirit? There's Thunder Spirit number two hitting the board. And, ooh, there's a quick response, a lightning bolt. Killing the second Thunder Spirit. And this was a needed response by Yupir. Remember, he is on six. He's quite low. Who's going to tap two? Ooh, more ground creatures. Remember, they cannot attack because of that moat. But of course, it can be useful once Hube finds his Hand of Justice. Ooh, more Thunder Spirits? Question mark. No, there's a force field. <laughs> Look at that. So Derek, you know, he needs offensive cards, but just finding a lot of defense control cards. Moat, Mace, force field. I mean, they're nice, but at this point in the match, you really want to get Yup as quickly uh, as possible down to zero. He's already on six. 
And here we see a Chaos Orb. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if Yup is now just going to take over the entire game. He's going to flip. I wonder if he's going to flip on the moat. Yeah, he is going to flip on the moat. Oh, is it going to be a hit? Oh, it's a miss. It's a miss. So the moat is not gone. It's going to stick. Oh, 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 a miss here. Remember, it is the finals. So there's, of course, a lot of tension. Yeah, these things happen. This is why I love Chaos Orb. There's always this question, are you going to hit? Yes, usually you do, but not always. You got to flip. You got to feel the nerves going through your body. You got to do it. And I mean, if I compared, I already get nervous when I just do it at a tournament or, or even a casual game, but in a finals to flip. Wow. That is, that is very, very tense. So now another another land. More City of Brass is here for you. Oof. I would put those separate. I mean, he's on he's on six. Remember, um, Derek is playing with Icy Manipulator. So that could be another road to victory for him. Another plane just to pass, it seems. Ooh, is that a Hand of Justice? Was that a hand? If he casts it, though, he's going to put himself on three. So <laughs> I think exactly. I think you don't want to do that right now. You just want to be patient. But uh, it would be kind of cool to see the Hand of Justice again. We saw him in game one really doing work. And again, I think for Derek, he needs to find a way to to deal some damage. Yeah, this is not going to help. Here we do see that card in 1994-2019. Yeah, showing it to the camera. Really cool. The story behind that is there was a um, Fallen Empires booster draft to celebrate 25 years of Fallen Empires, organized by Yup, who is the opponent here of Dedek. And that was a great day. day I was there as well. And I built a, a deck around Goblin Kites. And that's quite good if you're playing a, a Fallen Empires only because hardly anything flies. Here we see uh, Yup just drawing passing. So that moat has really kind of uh, stopped this match. And we see more mazes of if, by the way. Oh, of course, there we go. <laughs> Circle of Protection, red. I think, I think we're going to be here for a while. There we see a white knight. There's a pass. I mean, I think how many disenchants are in the graveyard of Yup? I think two disenchants in the graveyard. Probably he's playing three. Hopefully he's playing four and he can find... So he has two more chances to, uh, to disenchant the moat. Okay, there's a gem they told him. This is a big deal here. This is a big deal for um, for Dedek. I mean, I think I think Moat and Gem they told him is really quite a nice combination here. He can just keep drawing cards. Talking about drawing cards, we see a Loa. Now remember, only four cards in hand for Yup. So he could just choose to be patient, go up to seven, start using the Loa. The, the game is kind of in a standstill anyway. And if both players can start drawing a lot of cards, we're probably going to see some fireworks. There's a Caracas. It's going to tap for to draw a card, of course. And again, if you're Dedek, I guess you're really looking for Icy. So with Icy Manipulator, you can just tap down the City of Brasses and kill Yup that way. And the other cards you're looking for, obviously, are Flyers. But there are quite a lot of Flyers in the bin already. I think uh, Sarah Angel and two Thunder Spirits. And I believe he's only playing with two Thunder Spirits in his list. So he's just waiting to find uh, Sarah Angels. And yeah, you kind of saving up here to go up to seven to start using his Library of Alexandria. And I, yeah, I think if you're Derek, you should be worried about this. Ooh, five. There's a Sarah Angel. Ooh, and remember, Yup's on six. Sarah can fly over the troops. Doesn't care about the moat. So Yup going to draw another card. Not quite sure if he's got six or seven cards in hand. We'll see. If it's seven, he's going to use the Loa. Looks like it's six. There's a Tundra. And there's a sword supply shears. I'm a little bit surprised that he's playing out the tundra though. Does it mean that he's got maybe that hand of justice that he wanted, wants to play next turn? There's another planes. But I mean it's still looking kind of good for um for Dedek here with that uh Jam de Tome. Okay, there's an uh, occasion javelin here, so more javelin ears. He could use this occasion javelin here also, of course, uh, to deal one damage to Yup, put him on five. It's probably better to just, you know, keep the javelin counter on it. Unless it's um 
Unless it's the last point of damage, of course, for you. So drawing a card on end step with the Gem de Tome. And now Derek is going to draw for turn. And Yup again trying to go back up to seven to use the Loa. So I was a little bit surprised here of Yup again that he played out the Tundra to play the uh, Swords because he had white mana available. So I wonder why he did that. Anyway, uh, Derek, you're drawing another card that Gem de Tome is really doing a lot of work. And I think if you're Yup, you're really not happy about that. Okay, there's the Savannah Alliance. There's the pass. Okay, see so now up to seven. Ooh, Ancestral Recall. <laughs> yeah, this is, I mean, here you can see that difference, right, between power and non-power. The blue power really helped you as well uh, in that first game with the Time Walk. Being able then to hit hard with that uh, Sheevan Dragon. And now, of course, the uh, Ancestral Recall is going to help him to get up to seven quicker. And have that Loa activation, going up to eight cards in hand now. And I, I mean, I think if, if, if you're Dedic, you need to find something really, really quick, because now you pass that active Loa, and that's kind of the start of the end. Yes, you're on 17, but things could go very, very quick, and if you can find another Disenchant to take care of the moat, it's going to be really tough. Of course, he still does have the Force Field, and the COP Red, and of course, two Mazes of If, so it's not the only thing that he has to, uh, to protect himself. Okay, there we see a Sarah Angel. There's the Sarah. Now, will it stick? That is the question. Yup has a billion cards, but hopefully there's no Psionic Blast or no Swords of Plowshares. And if there is a Psionic Blast, at least he's going to deal two damage to himself. He would drop to four. So it's not a done deal yet for Yup. He will have to really play for it. Tapping two. Ooh, there's a Disenchant on the moat. Disenchant on the moat. Ooh, we could be up for a really big turn here. The finals of the Zombie Cup. Yup's already a game ahead. If he wins this, he's the winner of the Zombie Cup. Moat has been disenchanted. Gonna draw card number eight with the Loa. Now do remember though, Dedek has two mazes of if and a COP red. And of course that force field. So what Force Field can do, it's an artifact, and you can pay one, and you can do that multiple times, and then target creature only deals one point of damage instead of the uh, damage it would normally do. So for example, if you attack with the White Knight, you don't take two points of damage, you only take one. I think if your first point of business is to try to take care of that uh, Sarah Angel, that is by far the most dangerous card on the table for Yup. The Sarah could put him on two, and then with the Javelin counter, you're on one. He's tapping four, tapping five, tapping six. Is he going to cast a Sheevan Dragon? And yep, there's the Sheevan. So Sheevan Dragon, that's of course a great blocker for... Um, for the Sarah Angel and just passing the turn here. So yeah, this is really the card that you've needed because even if um, if Derek has an answer to the Sheevan, it's probably going to be a sort of supply shares, meaning five life for you go up to 11. And then yes, he gets hit from the Sarah, but he's far from being dead. Yeah, there we see these uh, sorts to plowshares. Probably it's hard. Yeah, that's a swords, right? So he's gonna go back up to 11. Then they're going to be the attack. He's going to drop to seven. So there's the attack. Or are we going to see a sword supply shares from you? Nope. He's going to take the damage. Drop to seven. There's the untap. Upkeep draw. And then draw card number eight with the Loa. Oh, man. This second game is fun. This is what I hope to see. Oh, there's a, there's a sword. He has so many answers in both of the decks. So Dedek going back up from 17 is going up to 21. There's another Mishra's Factory. So I wonder at what time Yup is going to do the uh, Alpha Strike. And I wonder if he really has that Hand of Justice. Maybe I thought he drew a Hand of Justice. He doesn't have it. Because it would seem sensible now to start playing your Hand of Justice. 
and you can start killing the creatures on the side of Dedek, kind of emptying the board and prepare for a big uh, strike. Dedek, of course, being on 21, and I still think that an Icy Manipulator would be amazing here for Dedek. Also because Yoop already has three disenchants in his graveyard, and I'm not quite sure if he's playing three or four. Of course, he also sideboarded, so maybe he put some Divine Offerings in. I just don't know. Oh, look at that. It looks like he's going to attack. Wow, that is interesting. So putting four creatures here into the red zone. Has, of course, the Mazes of If to take them out of battle. If he's unhappy with how the blocks turn out. But there we see White Knight on White Knight. Order of Light Burr on White Knight. So those cards all going to exchange basically gonna kill each other there we see order on order yeah of course he's going to give it first strike and i guess he can kill the lion here so but then that can like i said use his mace So these two are going to die. That one is going to die because it's going to block and then, yeah, exactly. The other order on the Savannah lines. So both of the orders, exactly, they all die. It's a nice exchange of creatures here. At the end of the day, um, Dedek is losing his Savannah line and he's kind of indicating that he has a balance in hand. He's tapping the javelin. You're taking the javelin counter off. Oh, playing Wrath of God. Okay. So he's playing the Wrath. Yeah, I wonder. Maybe he was hoping to kind of get some more damage through. I mean, the Wrath is not doing that much for him. Yeah, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit, I don't know if I would have played a Raph here, if I would have, would have done that play. Then again, you do kind of clean up the board and kind of get a better idea of, okay, what's what's on there. And also, remember, Yup, of course, playing with those Hands of Justice, just by dealing with, with so many white creatures on the side of Yup, it's going to be really hard for him to get, like, a Hand of Justice online in this uh, second game. And we saw how devastating Hand of Justice can be in that first game. There we see a soul ring. Yeah, I mean, he can animate, but I mean, Dedek has double maze. Oh yeah, gonna attack for six, sent two factories back. Then he's gonna pump the one factory to a 4-4. Four, four. And then of course he's gonna use the force field. Or not, or just disenchant. <laughs> he can also disenchant. I was kind of thinking he could do force field, just take one damage, go to 20. Going for a disenchant instead. Okay, there's a time walk. Okay, that's, you know, that's kind of nice. For you, he can deal a little bit of damage. Now, I do remember uh, there's still that force field, of course. Untap, upkeep, draw. Play, uh, draw another card, I mean, with the Loa. You can animate the factories, attack for four, but then, of course, um, Dedek's going to use force field, only take two points. We'll drop to 19. I mean, Dedek also has so much life still. It is crazy. Counting. Okay, there's a Sarah Angel. Ooh, there's a quick sword to plowshares there. But I mean, I'm thinking if you're Yoop, yes, it's a sword. It's annoying. On the other hand, you take four life again. Go back up to ten. I think the bigger problem for Yoop here, obviously, is that Jam Day Tome. He needs to get rid of that Tome. Then again, he's got a Loa, so they're both drawing two cards per turn. And there's a Savannah Alliance. Not looking great with those two factories on the side of Hoops. Uh, of Battlefield. 
Okay, going to take care of one of the two mazes. Does he have a bolt here for the lion? Bolt yep, the there's lion. a bolt for the lion. So, Yup uh, playing quite aggressive here. Going to swing in. One factory will be sent back. It's going to pump it to three. Using the force field. Just take one point. Going to drop to uh, 18. Yep, there's a Jam Day Tome on end step. That makes perfect sense. So both players just drawing a lot of cards, which I like because it means you get a lot of action, right? Usually when you see one person drawing an extra card a turn, that person usually wins the game. But in this case, both players have a way to draw extra cards. And that means we just get to see more action. Yep, there we see the Icy Manipulator. Yeah, this is... Well, he's on 10 now, so it's going to take longer. But when he was on 6, I was like, okay, that could be a road to, to victory for Dedek. I mean, still can. Just a little ping every turn. Then if you're Yoop now, you have to decide if you find another way, uh, a Divine Offering or a Disenchant, what are you going to Disenchant? Yeah, going to go for the Icy straight away. So that was really a no-brainer. And look at that, he's actually going to tap the Factory instead of tapping a City of Brass. Ooh, there's an Ecation Javelin here that can kill that Savannah Alliance. Oh, those Ecation Javelin years. What they basically do is every one toughness creature in your deck gets way worse. Like, if possible, I would board them all out after the first game, you know, like all my one toughness creatures. Maybe not my Javelin Year then, but I would definitely board out the Savannah Lines. Here we see another Icy hitting the board, so the problem is back for you. And there's the pass turn. So let's see what you can do. Kind of expecting him to kill the Savannah line here. And then attack with the two factories. Card number eight being drawn here by uh, Yup with the Loa. Let's see. Okay, there's an Order of Light Burr hitting the board. 2-1. Protection from black. One white first strike. Two white plus one plus oh. Also referred to as a Pump Knight. Okay, there we see the Javelin Counter killing the Lion. Tapping two, animating. Wants to go into combat, and Derek in response taps one of the two. Probably gonna pump the other, then gonna attack, send it back with the mace. And that's that. But I think for Yup this is also a good outcome because it means he's not going to use the Icy to tap down the city. Now we see the untap. And they draw for turn here. Gonna tap four, use the tome. He's got five left. Okay, there is another Mox, Mox Emerald. He's got six mana. Probably wants to keep at least one mana for the Icy. Gonna tap two, it seems. One white and one. Okay, there's Chaos Orb. He's gonna flip the orb. I wonder what he's gonna flip on. Yeah, he's gonna go for uh, the Mishra's Factory. Ooh, it's a hit. A bumpy one, but it's a hit. So he's hitting the Factory. So that's a goner. And then passing the turn here back to Yoop. Look at that library of Yoop, by the way. It's getting really, really thin. <laughs> Do remember, he's playing with Time Twister. So he can just cast Time Twister, you know, and then shuffle everything back in. But still, okay, tapping. He wants to attack, tapping the Order of Lightburr. We're doing that before. Anyway, he's playing a Sarah Angel. Let's see if he uh, goes into combat. Why not, right? I mean, I would imagine he would do so. Animating the factory, attacking with a Javelinier and a 2-2. Two -two. 
That would mean at least one point of damage. Every point counts. There we see him tap the land. I mean, you would think it would just animate um, the factory here, attack with the 2-2 two, two and the 1-1. One, one. Yes, going to animate, exactly. And he's going to swing in. There's the May sending it back. One point of damage left. And Derek dropping to 17. <laughs> He's still so high. But I guess Shoop's also back to 10. So it's starting to look better and better for Yoop, to be honest. But Derek still has that active Loa, so that really helps him. Drawing a card for turn. Tap four, gonna draw another card. What are we gonna see? Yeah, I would I would put that maze separate exactly because it doesn't give mana. Tapping two. Okay, here's a balance. Wow, another way to wipe the board. This is bad news for you, but also because of that Loa. Not quite sure how many cards there for deck. Looks like there are three cards in his hand. Could be more though, we don't see the entire hand. And I think all the creatures are going to die here. Okay, there's a swords to plowshares. On his own order, so he gains some life. And I think the reason that he doesn't sort um, the Sarah is because he knows he's got that uh, time twister, and then his Sarah, of course, can be shuffled back. Whereas if you play a swords on it, it's exiled, it's removed from the game, so he can't. Okay, 12 life here. What else is he gonna do? Oh, he's gonna play a Psionic Blast, I guess. Yep, gonna play a Psionic Blast, he's gonna drop to 10. And now we see Dex on 13. So kind of emptying his hand here. Because he has to discard it anyway to the uh, balance. So losing both creatures. And now he's got to decide what cards he wants to discard, what cards he wants to keep. Discarding his own balance. Yeah, balance hasn't been very good for you. Because he's been ahead on board most of the time in this uh, in this match, we saw him also discarding the balance uh, to a balance of uh, Derek in game one as well. Three cards left in hand. Now they're going to count their lands. Okay. <laughs> so three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So he's got to put one land into uh, the bin. It's going to be a city of brass or two actually. Two city of brass is into the bin. <laughs> yeah, Derek is now probably just going to pass the turn here back to Yoop. So Yoop's going to untap. That balance needs to go to the graveyard, of course. Has resolved. Yep, there it goes. Animating. Nope, not animating. Oh, there's the time twister. <laughs> oh, man. What a game! What a game! What a finals! So both players are gonna shuffle their graveyards back in. And it's good to see that Yup is uh, not shuffling back in his time twister. You would be surprised how often that happens. It happened to me as well not too long ago. It's kind of this automatic thing where you take all your cards, you shuffle them up. You're like, oh, wait a minute! Like time twister, it needs to go to the graveyard. So uh, Yoop and uh, Derek here shuffling up, gonna draw a fresh seven. Yoop on 10, Derek on 13. And this is the second game here of the finals. Yeah, and here we see, here we see. So Derek made the mistake of putting his removed creatures, shuffling those back into his library. So now he's gotta find them again. 
and take them out. Okay, it looks like he's found them. At least he remembered before he draws his fresh seven, because then if you draw seven and then you think, oh, wait a minute, those cards, they should have been out of my deck. Then you got to do the whole thing again. There we see him drawing a hand of seven. Yeah, now that Loa is active again. I mean, if you're Derek, you got to be like, ah, oh, jeez, I just, I finally played the balance, made sure you can no longer use your Loa, then I have the advantage of my Tome. But then he plays the Time Twister. And the Loa is back online. And he's got all his disenchants back in his deck. Of course, that also counts for Derek. But I mean, that Gem de Tome is looking very vulnerable right now. Gonna tap two. Is that, yeah, disenchant. Ooh, on the COP red. Ooh, that kind of surprises me. Does that mean that he's got a big fireball or a uh, Sheevan dragon in hand? Playing out the white knight here. Animating and attacking. Ooh, does he have a time walk in hand? Using the force field here, very clever of Dedek. He's kind of thinking, I think you got a time walk here. There we see an occasion javelin here. Now we're probably going to see a time walk, right? One blue and one for the time walk. Wouldn't be surprised. Yep, there's the time walk. And then there's also a bolt. So Yupa dropping here to nine, and he's putting um, Derek on nine as well, I believe. So both players on nine. Oh, what a game, what a game this is. Insane. So Yupa's gonna look at his resources, two cards in hand, I believe, for him now. So really went off the uh, the Loa plan, or three cards. There's a Sarah Angel. Yeah, just one card left in hand. I wonder what that other card is. Could it be the Sheevan? Oh, Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> oh, crazy. That makes sense, because I was like, if you're going off your Loa plan, there's got to be something big coming, right? So that's why I thought maybe Sheevan, maybe Big Fireball, just something, but of course a draw seven makes much more sense. Oh God, so now he's got a fresh seven and he can start using his Loa again. Yeah, this is really good for you. You can draw a card eight with the Loa. That's what he does. Yeah, this is giving him a big advantage. I believe we see another lightning bolt in hand, two of those, so that's six more damage. Could put him on three, and with the javelin here, could put him on two, so things can go quite fast. But knowing Yuppie's is not gonna do that just yet, because it's not lethal. Probably just first gonna try to get an attack lined up here, animating the factories, attacking with these four, because the angel still has summoning sickness. There's a maze, gonna maze the white knight. Five damage coming in using the force field, so only taking three. But I mean, three is still a lightning bolt. It's not too bad. And now he's on six. There's bolt number one. There's bolt number two. That's it. Yep. Ho, ho, ho. All of a sudden, it went pretty quick. All of a sudden. Um, wow. I think getting a time twister, finding a time walk, and finding a wheel, that was really what pushed it over the edge. I think Derek, you did a great job. You got very far, you got him down to six, but then your deck kept giving you control cards, whereas what you really needed were more offensive cards to win from that point. And then kind of Yoop started to stabilize again and I started to worry. Um, and yeah, Yoop, congratulations, man. You are the winner of the Zombie Cup number three with this beautiful Hand of Justice deck. 
well done and uh, also a big thank you and shout out to uh, Derek and to the zombie uh, crew to the zombie masters of uh, Zandam thank you so much this tournament is always a lot of fun and for us and for me it's really nice to go to Zandam it's right next door it's like a 10 minute drive to you guys so it's always great to come and visit and play old school magic with you thank you again for organizing this tournament and also thank you for watching uh, this uh, episode right now here on Timmy Talks before you go please take a moment to share comment uh, and like this video all these things are free and really help the channel move forward and talking about moving forward you can also become a patron of the show check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks to find out how you can support the channel financially for now thank you very much for watching and let's go to the end scroll Wow, you're still here? Well, that's actually very clever. Here's some hidden bonus footage for you. Yup, congratulations, you've won the Zombie Cup! Thanks, it feels amazing! And now you've won the best prize ever. That's of course a signed card, but also a booster pack of Fallen Empires. What, what are you hoping to pull? Um, well, obviously I'm hoping to pull another Hand of Justice. That would be amazing. And we saw you use the Hand of Justice in the finals. Has it been handy for you during the day? I Well, obviously the Hand of Justice is the handiest card in the deck. <laughs> I'd say it's, it's a very hands-on card. And whenever I had it in hand or on board, it was amazing. Um, but uh, so I, I, can, I can fully recommend everybody uh, playing it. Yeah. And you are a lawyer, so it makes sense. And what many people don't know is that you've also won the online Fallen Empires tournament that we held on Timmy Talks, I don't know how many years ago. So you're also the current Fallen Empire Timmy Talks champion. So I'm Which not surprised that, that you won the tournament. And that's, that was also a deck that uh, spotted uh, the Hand of Justice. Yeah, so it's full circle. So maybe you can pull Hand of Justice. I think, what, what are some other interesting card, cards? Conchhorn, maybe? Uh, I'd say Ala Pile would be a, a great pull. That is one of the better cards. Uh, obviously, him to Turok. Yeah, that's really good. And, and get, uh, get, that, get, that, the, get the wolf art. Yeah, that's beautiful. And that land card is good. The Lotus Valley, no? What's the Rainbow Veil? Rainbow Veil, sure. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, obviously completely broken in in a Lantex deck. Yeah, I love, but I also love the art of Rainbow Veil. It's Kaya Foglio, I think, who's done the art. I don't know, I, I, I'd, have to, I'd have to look at that, but it, it is beautiful, for do you, sure. Do you remember where the rare is in these packs? Because there are only eight cards in, right? I'm, I'm the, not entirely sure. I know, because I mean, these packs are obviously, they are, they are see-through. Ah, so, did you check so, it out? So this, I know that the front is is where the cards are on the back. So if I open it like this, I won't be able to see any of the cards. So that, I guess that's probably the best. Yeah, let's do it. And I think I'm saying rare, but of course we got to talk about uncommon one, uncommon two, uncommon three, right? And I think uncommon one is as print, print wise as rare as a rare. Um, sure, and obviously... I don't know, I think. Opening is always priceless, right? So... Yeah, go for it, man. Let's see what, let's see what you can pull. Let's, uh, let's have, uh, have a look. It would be really cool if you could open a Hand of Justice. So, there we go. 
Let's see. Number one. Oh, it's Combat Medic. This is one of my favorite Fallen Empire cards. It was actually in my in my Fallen Empire's constructed winning deck. And uh, Ron Dijkstra, he knows very well that and, this card is unbeatable. And we also did a few uh, drafts with Fallen Empires, right? I think you also put a Combat Medic in some of those decks. Card is nuts. <laughs> oh! There we go, Braslaw Orcs. And this is a very special card because it's a Rob Alexander card and it's not signed. And it's not a dual land? Also not a dual land, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> All right, let's go, let's have a look. Yeah! Merfolk! Vadalian Soldiers. Uh, a 1 2 vanilla, because of course. Yeah. Number four Goblin Surgeon. I love the art of this one. Yeah, because so you see Odin Troll, you see Yedit Oyanen, and you see a lot of elves, and they're all being stitched together. Exactly, super cool. And number five, Elvish Hunter. There we go. It's kind of a maze of if, right? The Elvish Hunter, kind of. Yeah, it's kind of funny because she's shooting at something, um, but it's not doing any damage. It would have made more sense, maybe. Oh, it's called the Elvish Hunter, of course. Yeah. And maybe she was like setting a trap or something. Because that, yeah, that's basically what happens, right? She don't yeah. deal any damage. And, uh, well, I mean, she's only wearing a belt. So there you go. <laughs> okay, next. These should be the two uncommons, by the way. No, this is number six. Oh, okay, okay, number six. So this is common still. Dwarven Soldier. Funny it's story so... about the Dwarven Soldier, I misread this card during one of our Fallen Empire drafts and I thought it always got that bonus, because when it blocks it gets... Plus... plus O plus 2, when it blocks an Orc. Exactly, and I thought when it blocks it gets the bonus, so I just put it in my deck. And then I was playing, I was like, oh man. I mean, it's it's not that bad, it's a 2-drop. Yeah, true. In, in current Magic, if you don't have a 2-drop, you're losing regardless. Um, oh, okay. Obviously, you can see that in the picture, the dwarf is fighting some sort of dragon creature, which has nothing to do with the orc flavor. So, I don't know. A missed opportunity. Definitely. And then we go for... So, these are the last two. So, these should be the uncommons. Nice. Da -da -da -dum. All right. Let's go. Hand of Justice. Dwarf oh, Lieutenant. This is really nice. It is, and it's also funny because it has like a a lighter color than the other red cards in the pack. So, uh, and you can pump it, you right? You, you can pump it for two red or not? You can pump target dwarf ah, for that's one in the red. Yeah. So there's actually synergy with the soldier over there. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's decent. It's two red for a one two that you can pump and also that can pump other creatures. So I have an artist proof eh, of this card. The, you <laughs> are the master of the fallen empires. I have to say. <laughs> okay, last one. This is my last chance to get the hand of justice. Yeah. Oh wow, but it is a six drop. And a big and a big daddy. This thing is I mean, it, it, it is probably, together with Orc, it is the most powerful creature in Fallen Empires. Um, you've got the uh, the Lobster. Oh, yeah, that's also a six power uh, Deep Spawn, so, yeah, I think Deep Spawn is... In, in, in Black, you have the Ebon Praetor for yeah. five. That's a five-five, five, right, the Ebon Praetor? And of course, in, in White, you get uh, Hand of Justice, which, although powerful, only has two power, in fact. Yeah, but it's so. I remember us playing the Fallen Empires only tournament. It's impossible to kill the Hand of Justice because you only really have a dwarf and catapult to deal with creatures. Yeah. <laughs> if, yeah. if you don't know what dwarf and catapult does, by the way, if you're listening, look it up and then you, you know what I mean. With the, it's really hard to kill the Hand of Justice with that card. Um, yeah, great, Joop. Uh, congratulations with, uh, with the victory and thank you for sharing uh, the opening. It's a pretty decent booster. Yeah, great pulls. Yeah, I mean, if, if this would be uh, a sealed event, it wouldn't be that bad. 
No, because especially because I mean, most of them are in one color. So yeah, yeah, true. And you can splash. Uh, oh, it's hard to splash combat medic because you need a lot of planes for it. Yeah, and also hard to splash feral talent. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it's fallen empires, you know. It is, it, is, it is great. And opening is always priceless. Always priceless. Thank you for sharing. Thanks, man. Ikitus, ikitus, somba, kazee.